prepare yourself to be blown away by the seismic sound and scrutiny of... After Shots Podcast with Chris Aiken and Matt Hartnett. All right, well, here we go, and welcome to another episode of Aftershocks on AfterShocksPodcast.com. And joining us today, we've got one of the old-time greats in the psychedelic stoner rock world, who is the vocalist and bassist from New Jersey's own The Atomic Bitchwax, who are getting ready to release their eighth full-length and tenth studio release called Scorpio, set to come out August 28th through TP Records, Mr. Chris Kosnick. Chris, how's it going? Thanks for coming on with us today. Thanks, man. Yeah, I'm doing really good especially ever since the world caught on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure you are, man. Well, at least you got a nice, awesome new album out, man. Let's talk about that called Scorpio. Uh, you know, the first thing I noticed when listening to the new record is obviously, you know, there's a bit of a uh, change in the guitar sound, the tone, uh, the leads definitely have uh, a different feel to it. And it's a bit more crunchy, fuzzy, metallic. It just, it, it Overall, I think it's a little bit heavier, uh, a little bit less so than a lot of the psychedelic sounding guitar you've had, you know, we used to hear and, you know, from you guys over the years. And of course, I'm assuming that's attributed to the band's new guitarist, Garrett Sweeney, who's made his first uh, recording with you guys on the record, uh, replacing your previous guitarist, Finn Ryan, who had been with the band for, you know, five full lengths. So how difficult or not difficult at all has the transition been from going from Finn to Garrett, considering that, you know, Finn was uh, with the band for 15 years and was such a integral, you know, part of the sound of the uh, Atomic Bitchwhack sound for yeah. so long. Yeah. Well, he, he, uh, well, Finn, uh, yeah, Finn, Finn is amazing. And, uh, and it was, it, it was really, uh, it, it was tough to lose him. It really was. Mm. Uh, yeah, you're absolutely right. He was a significant part of the sound. And, uh, but, uh, you know, without going into like, you know, real depth of it, he, he had some personal things he needed to deal with. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it was, you know, I, I guess, you know, to, to keep it short, it was, it was kind of compromising the tour schedule and stuff like that. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, and it just turned, he just wasn't able to tour. So, sure, sure. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, but, you know, I had been playing in Monster Magnet for seven years too. And, mm -hmm. and so, uh, and Bob and Garrett are also both of Magnet. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I had already been playing with Garrett for seven years, although it was in a different band. You know, the transition to from him coming into coming into Bitchwax really wasn't as jarring, just because we had all the three of us had been playing together for years already. Right. And uh, and you know, and and uh, and Garrett was a fan of the band in the first place, so kind of you know, mm -hmm. it it all it all kind of worked itself out. But yeah, um, losing Finn that that sucked. But uh, but Garrett's amazing, and he stepped right in and made it happen. Yeah, no, he did a great job, man. Because I mean, this, the album's fantastic, and you know, one of the things that stuck out to me when I f first saw the song titles for the record was uh the first track was hope you die and i'm like wait a second i know this song <laughs> it's a song you guys obviously did 20 years ago on the uh the uh the first full length that you released uh, yeah. back in 99 um and so my and my first thought when i saw that you re-recorded the song uh you know well, let's just say i was i was i was glad you didn't change any of the lyrics in there because that was my original fear just being a fan uh because you know in today's world right. a song like that if it was written recorded who knows if they've would let you, you know allow you to put that on the streaming sites at this point you know it's it's ridiculous but uh so what was the reason that you guys you know revamped that song was it done just for um the celebration of the 20th anniversary for the record yeah i mean you know first and foremost yeah, that, that was that that was absolutely why and uh it was the first song that i had ever written that had vocals in it for bitch Wax. Mm -hmm. and uh and and this the song is true it was about an ex-girlfriend of mine and i was you know i was you know, 25 at the time. <laughs> and, uh, mm. you know, I was mad. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, it's funny all these years later. I'm not really angry anymore. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but, but that song is a staple in our set. And, mm. uh, and the first record had been out of print for years. And, you know, at the merch stand every night, people were always asking me, what, what record is Hope You Die on? 
And I'm like, well, it's on the first one, but they're really, you know, it's difficult to find that record now. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and then it just turned into, you know, why don't we just re-record it? We'll do it with Garrett. And I split, I split the vocals up with him. I don't know if you realize that it's, it's, uh, Garrett yes. both singing that he takes a verse. I take a verse. Yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and, uh, yeah. And so, uh, you know, so now when someone asks me what song the record's on, I'm going to say this one. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Very cool. Well, uh, uh, Chris, real, real quick, why, why is that first record out of print? I mean, is, is it just a thing of nobody owns the rights to get it, to re-put it into, into print? Because it just seems like it should be out there at this point. I mean, the band has enough right. success, you or, or at least name well, recognition, that it should be out there. Yeah, well, it actually is now. Okay. Uh, it actually did. Uh, yeah, TP did repress it about Great. three months ago. Okay. And, uh, and so it is now. Excellent. And, uh, it got remastered too, so it actually sounds better than nice. the original one. And, uh, and uh, yeah, it took a long time. And, uh, you know, some of the, you know, the original guys in the band weren't thrilled about putting it out. Uh, you know, they're not really doing anything, so it's just kind of like, yeah, I don't. I don't understand. You know why people don't want to make any money when they don't even have to do anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> sure. You know what I mean? But uh, for whatever, you know, for whatever the reasons, there was a lot of a lot of arguing going back and forth to make it happen. Eventually, it came together. So, uh, so it's out. You know, and awesome. uh, and and it was very. You know, it's a li limited pressing too. So chances are, if you don't get it this time, it'll never happen again. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So get out there and buy it, you cheapskates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not even on. It's not. You can't even get it on streaming. It's, you know, it's it's totally okay. like you know, it's doesn't go through our regular regular distributor. It's just an in-house thing only through TPA. Sure. Mm -hmm. Spe since you brought up the streaming, how important is that? You're one of the few bands that I see that really doesn't have most of your stuff out there. And and I'll be honest, that's refreshing in a way that that most of it is not out there. You know, is is that is that just a testament to your fans actually buying the product, or is that you guys making a stand saying we don't want one penny for every ten million plays that the stuff gets, or or what? Well, the uh, the original first like two or three records. Uh, Although uh, although the first two records were on TP, it was a different owner at the time, okay. and uh, and he ended up bankrupt bankrupting the company, and uh, hmm. uh, they actually uh, before he went out of business, he sold it to the guy that currently owns it. So uh, so you know we're, you're you're talking twenty years ago, right? You know what I mean? Before there was any streaming or anything like that, mm -hmm. and so. Uh, and then, and then we actually ended up going to Meteor City, another, another like independent label. Mm -hmm. And it, uh, just back then we were young, we were stupid and, you know, we didn't, uh, weren't keeping track of where things were. And, you know, the records were just kind of fell through the cracks. The band was always in, on the verge of breaking up in the beginning. And so, uh, you know, I wouldn't say that, you know, we took a stand, uh, I'd say more like, you know, we we didn't do enough to make it, to make it happen. And it's, it's only, I am playing catch up years later, trying to get this stuff out there and get it streaming now, okay. because that seems to be where most people are listening to music is through streaming. Mm -hmm. I can't, uh, even myself included, I can't remember the last time I bought a CD. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so. Right. I mean, I still buy lots of, I still buy vinyl, but the, you know, I rarely, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even play it. It's more for the collection. You know what I mean? Right. But so when I, when, I, when I listen to music, I listen to it streaming. Sure. Well, um, Chris, let me let me bring it back to the new record because I know we don't want to just only talk about you know what if questions here. Um, yeah, yeah. The the one song that that definitely jumps out at me for from listening to Scorpio is Energy. I it, it's it might be the most catchy song in the entire Atomic Bitchwax catalog. Talk a little bit about this one because it just has such a different flavor to it than. 90% of what you guys have done. Really? I, I thought, thought so. it had a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, pretty straightforward riff in it, you know, 
<laughs> I, I, so, yeah, I, I, I mean, I'll tell you, I found it to be almost poppier, and, and I, it's not pop by any means, but it was more, you know, a lot of you guys' stuff is a lot more ethereal or emotional, you know, whatever, whatever we're calling that, that fuzzed out, you know, guitar riff sound sure. where I sure. found, where I personally found energy to be a lot more, you know, catchy, I guess, or, or pop, pop oriented, I guess. Well, so the, so oddly enough in, uh, in like the early 2000, uh, no, late, late 2000, maybe 2007, something like that. We put out a record called Tab Four, you know, the Atomic mm-hmm. Trucks Four, mm-hmm. and uh, and this was during the time that uh, Queens of the Stone Age was just huge. They were fucking huge, and uh, and you know we're still playing, you know, like underground riff rock, and not really selling a lot of records. So I took a stab on this <laughs> on that four record of mm-hmm. trying to write some more accessible tunes that incorporated this stoner rock thing. And, uh, and we even tuned up to natural E and, you know, I listened to a lot of Beatles records and stuff mm-hmm. and it blew up in my face. The record was total crap. <laughs> 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 so I said, all right, well, I, you know, I took a stab at it and, uh, but I had always liked a lot of, I, you know, I like a lot of pop music, like, you know, my <clears throat> older pop music, my, like my top five bands, the cars is one of them. Okay. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it's like, uh, you know, I always, I have that background and for my age too, I was a teenager in the eighties when it was like, you know, pop and new wave were huge. Sure. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, I know there was obviously there was a lot of metal that was popular too, but you know, I wanted to date new wave girls. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, I, I listened to the Cure, love and rockets and like mm-hmm. all those bands, you know what I mean? Cause I wanted, uh, I wanted to hang out with goth girls. <laughs> Uh, yeah no I should, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah. yeah. My, my 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 roots is rock and metal you know of course it's always you know all the big ones you know mm-hmm. sabbath zeppelin you know all, all that <clears throat> but i mean how many times can you listen to zeppelin you know mm-hmm. yeah no, totally. you know i remember uh you know chris when you guys were first uh starting out it was you and there were several other you know prominent hard rock you know stoner bands whatever you want to call it in and around the whole new york and new jersey area you know you had bands like chrome locust and core you know just just to name a couple off the top of my head and you guys were all signed to mia records and that was a label that i thought at the time was about to really take things to another level for hard rock and metal bands you know in the u.s at that time and then i mean one day it was like the label just boom went defunct overnight and the band signed you know that were signed on the label had to suddenly look elsewhere like you guys did and of course you just mentioned which i think is one of the you know all-time great independent labels for hard rock tp records they really kind of stepped in and released all those albums that i was just talking about from those bands if you don't mind me asking me, what was the deal with that whole MIA situation? Because that was just such a strange thing that happened where yet they had all these great bands signed and then boom, they were just done overnight. Well, so uh so in the late nineties, uh TP uh TP actually stands it's it's even though it's spelled like you know, like the the tent, you know, like mm-hmm. TP. Mm-hmm. It's really it's really the guy's initials. It's uh Tony Presedo. Mm-hmm. And uh <clears throat> and it was just Tony Presedo Records, but he, everybody started calling it a TP. So, and then it just turned into TP mm. Records. So anyway, he was just like, you know, this, uh, he was a young guy and he was into, you know, punk rock and you know, uh, stone rock and all that stuff. And he just started putting out seven inches on his own of bands that he liked. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and so uh, he started, it started to do, started to do well. He was starting to sell some records. And so, but he didn't have any money of his own. So, uh, MIA records was this label that was in New York and, uh, and he had hooked up with them. So TP was actually like a subsidiary to MIA. Oh, okay. Meaning that Tony, so Tony had billions on TP, but MIA was fronting all the money to put out the records. Okay. So, so we were never, we were never on MIA straight up. It was always MIA TP records. Okay. Tony. Okay. Okay, I was just always kind of confused about that because, yeah, I just, I know you were, you were, you guys were linked to, to that label somehow, but okay, I wasn't, I didn't know they were actually right. TPU as a subsidiary. Okay, cool. Well, you know, speaking of the uh, Stone of Rock, you know, um, you were just talking about, I mean, the scene itself has taken off. I mean, 
in the late nineties, it was taken off. I mean, much of the music press, they, a lot of them, you know, people attributed it to, you know, to success from the grunge scene, considering that both genres had that strong seventies, hard rock elements and influences in the sound and style. Um, and a lot of people thought that, you know, the stoner thing might just be sort of a blip in the radar of hard rock history yet the bands and just the scene overall, really it's continued to grow. I mean, exponentially. I mean, from what I'm observing over the last say five years or so is not only just to see, but you guys yourselves are stronger and you're more relevant now than, I mean, than I can ever remember. I mean, in terms of touring, I mean, I've seen you, I'm out here on the West coast now. I mean, I've seen you guys, I think you've been out here three times in the last five years. And before that, you guys weren't out here for quite some time. I mean, this is, does it surprise you to see not only, you know, atomic bitch wax, but other bands that were around during that time. Are you surprised to see this music, you know, as popular and relevant today, or if not more than it was, you know, back in the nineties uh, during, you know, it's in uh, its inception. Yeah. I mean, there was definitely, there's definitely some like, you know, ebb and flow to the whole thing. Like it, it was big in the late nineties, early two thousands. Mm -hmm. And then uh, it, it was like, you know, real slowly started to die out a little bit. And then around like 2010, 2011, it started making a little bit of a comeback mm -hmm. and it started dying out again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so there's, a, you know, it's been, it's been this run the whole time, you know what I mean? Uh, okay. You know, and, and, and th think about it like this, like in 20 years, there's a whole new crop of guys listening to this stuff now. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I, I have, you know, I have kids come up to me and they're like, my dad turned me on to you guys. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, wow. you know, a tw you know, a 20, a 20 year old kid with a 45 year old dad. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Sure. Okay. And, uh, so, you know, it's kind of like, we're so old, we're new. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Is, uh, I, I'm curious, Chris, if the, um, the obvious association to monster magnet, both now and all the way back when, when the band started, if you think that was helpful, if obviously it was helpful at the beginning, getting the word out there about the atomic pitch wax, is it still helpful or have you guys grown past that to where, where people aren't still saying, Oh yeah, it's the guys from monster magnet. Right. Well, so it's a double edged sword really. So yeah, in the beginning it was kind of cool for just a, just like real quick history. Um, uh, Ed, who uh, who was the original guitar player who was also in in, in magnet at the time mm -hmm. um, we were actually playing together before he was in magnet so so it's kind of weird like you know he he got you know he auditioned for that band he got the gig and you know we were still a band and i i played in another uh another band called godspeed that was mm -hmm. on atlantic for right. a few years too yeah and uh and so it was kind of like you know, Ed was in Magnet, I was in Godspeed, and then we had Atomic Bitchwax, sort of like a side band. Okay. And then uh, Magnet started getting bigger, and then all of a sudden exploded. Right. And uh, and we and Bitchwax had to keep canceling tours because Ed would have to go do a photo shoot or mm. you know something, something totally you know. And it, just, it, be, it became like, wow, this is a really dysfunctional thing we got going here, and especially with the the, uh, the label always teetering for bankruptcy. And, you know, it was just, it was just a real shit show. Right. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and so event eventually, uh, me and the original drummer were like, ah, we got to get somebody else, you know, cause Ed's not going to be able to commit to this to, with any kind of regularity. It was just be whenever he was available. And, uh, and, uh, so Finn, uh, was from core with the band, Dan, you mentioned mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. and, and we, we all live well, like within five miles of each other. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's this real incestuous kind of, you know, area to where everybody's been in everybody's band. Right. You know, mm. I, I did I like, I didn't necessarily get in Monster Magnet because I was good. It was just because, you know, <laughs> it was my turn. Nice. Well, um, um, you know, since we're talking a little bit about Monster Magnet, you obviously made the decision to leave Monster Magnet this year. Uh, you right. know, was that just to focus more full time on Atomic Bitchwax, or did you just run your course with that, or, or what? What went into that decision? Well, 
I guess, you know, th- that would be the nice way to say it, is that I, yeah, that, that ran its course. So, so I was in it for like seven years. And, and between the two bands, you know, I was touring, I don't know, five, sometimes six months out of the year right. for the last seven years. And uh, out of both bands, I'm the only one that's married with a, with a family. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so that sort of played a, started playing a role in it too, to where, you know, I still, I still needed to work when I was home and, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's also hard to find the job when, you know, they know you're going to leave. Mm-hmm. And, it, it, you know, it wasn't like I'd work. It wasn't like I would uh, be on tour straight for six months. I, you know, I'd be away for a month, be home for three weeks, go away for five weeks. So, you know, you know what I mean? There was always weeks in between them all. And, uh, and it was just hard, like to, you know, find work in the interim between the tours too. And, uh, and, you know, with the mag, the mag thing, you know, it, I can't say enough uh, how fun it was to play in that band. And, uh, I learned a lot, a lot about songwriting through, you know, getting, uh, getting to see someone that's really good at it, you know, up close and personal. Dave Dave is an amazing songwriter, amazing singer. And when, and I had never been in somebody else's band before either. So it was like learning somebody else's way of doing things. You're like, Oh, that's why he does it like that. And Mm -hmm. you're, Oh, that makes so much sense. Right. So Mm -hmm. I acquired a lot of, a lot of information that I, you know, wouldn't have, wouldn't have gotten on my own. And, uh, and, you know, I kind of incorporated some of those things into bitch I guess, you know, not, mm-hmm. not intentionally, it just, you know, happened naturally. And, uh, and so, you know, the, the thing I guess with playing with Magnet is Dave's not interested in your stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, you, you know, here's the tune, you play the song as written and here's your check. Gotcha. You know what I mean? And, Hi- uh, and, hired, and, hired gun, pretty much. Yeah, you, you know, you're you're hired to yeah. you're hired to back up the space lord. That's yeah. what you're, that's gotcha. right. <laughs> right. Uh, and and, uh, and, it, and it was a lot of fun. You know, I did some really crazy big tours, and you know, it, it's you know, I can't I can't say that I, I don't miss it, but uh, I miss it too. And I'm like, well, I'm gonna do this that I love the most you know, and something that where, you know, I can, I can still write and, you know, it mm-hmm. wasn't like I was done writing or anything yet. You know what I mean? Like I, mm-hmm. I really wanted to keep bitch rocks going forever if I can. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so, you know, I left on very good terms, you know what I mean? It wasn't like an argument it wasn't any kind of weird shit or anything like that. I just called Dave and I was just like, you know, I get, I gave him six months too. I was like, hey, I gave you six months to find somebody else. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he was super cool about the whole thing. So cool. Very cool. So that's that. Yeah. yeah, sure. No, thanks. Yeah, I mean, originally, you know, uh, just going back to Scorpio real quick, I know that was scheduled for a release, you know, originally this past spring. And, you know, but of course, due to this wonderful pandemic that we're mired in, uh, like many other releases out there, it got pushed back for a bit. And unfortunately, I know it's got to be such a huge bummer for you not to be able to obviously go out and tour for the new record. So, I mean, as a band that's getting ready to, you know, to release a new record at this time and with live music now, you know, on hold for who knows how long, but definitely the near future, what else can a band, you know, like a Thomas Picture Watch, I mean, what can you do to make up for the lack of those live shows that's, you know, the conventional, obviously traditional way to promote new music? Well, I, at the, cur- currently, like, you know, it's funny, you say, like, I'm supposed to be, <laughs> we're supposed to be in Europe right now. Sure, so, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, Here's the, here's, here's like, you know, here's the, the bum out part of the interview. This is already like, mm. <laughs> this, the, this would have been the second, the second tour that's canceled already this year. Wow. And, uh, and then we were supposed to start another one in October, which obviously isn't going to happen. Right. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, you know, so it's a real drag, like in that, regard, you know what I mean? Because, you know, mm. that's why they, they had pushed off the record a couple of months thinking that, well, maybe things will turn around, but of course they haven't. So, mm-hmm. sure. You know, and, uh, so anyway, uh, uh, as far as like, you know, what, what to do in the meantime, uh, the only thing that we've been doing is making videos and, uh, we made two of them already for this record and, and we're going to be making a third one for when, uh, the, the day the record comes out. 
at the mm-hmm. end of the month. Cool. And uh, there's, you know, there's really not much else you could do. I, I don't care for those, uh, you know, band streaming their band practice or whatever. I, I don't know. It's just <laughs> yeah, campy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, it's it's kind of like you know, like you know how they're doing, you know, Major League Baseball without a crowd, right? You know what I mean? So, yeah. It's, like that it's like you know mm. like you wouldn't go to a you know a band's not going to have a concert without the crowd that's half the concert mm-hmm. you yeah. know, you know what i mean it's totally like the two the, the the two entities are feeding off of each other the band and audience that's that's mm-hmm. what the show mm-hmm. and and now you know now i don't know i, don't know. I mean i i guess never say never but i i uh i haven't liked anybody's version of it that i've seen yet so yeah, you know, we'll we'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you think there's going to be any sort of silver lining in this thing? I mean, that you can see, or no? It's <laughs> just straight up no. Well, it's just it's just a weight game now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Just you know, you do your best to do your best to stay sit safe and healthy, mm-hmm. and uh, you know they'll come out with this uh, you know this cure that's supposed to be around you know the end of the year, early next year. Mm-hmm. And you figure by the time, you know, that gets distributed, you know, at least our, in our country anyway, you know, maybe mm-hmm. by next summer we'll be good to go again. So I, I'm looking at it like we're pretty much, you know, in a holding pattern for the next year. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately so. I know, man. Well, uh, you know, in the meantime, I mean, to the listeners, they can go, they can go ahead and pick up a copy of the eighth full-length release from Atomic, Atomic Pitch Wax is called Scorpio. It comes out August 28th on TP Records. And so, Chris, what we normally do here to end things on the podcast is we like to pick a song off the new record uh, and then have, you know, uh, the musician or guest, whoever we have on the show, tell a little story about it if they want to, and uh, we'll go ahead and play that for the audience to close things out. Wait, what do you mean? <laughs> so, so go ahead, go ahead, pick a song off the new record, and we'll go ahead and we'll play it for uh, the the listeners here to end the uh, podcast. Oh well, then let, let's uh, you know I'll keep it really simple. Then let's uh, let's let's play energy, and it's about doing cocaine. <laughs> nice, <laughs> nice and simple. Love it. <laughs> All right, awesome. Well, yeah, here yeah, it is. Yeah, the, the next time, yeah, the next time you listen to it, now it's going to have a whole new set of meaning. Whole, whole new meeting, absolutely. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, here it is. Here's energy from the Atomic Bitchworks, and thanks for listening to After Show. <laughs> for listening to Aftershocks. For more episodes, go to our website at www.aftershockspodcast.com. Visit us on our Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter pages for more news and information on the podcast. And be sure to subscribe, listen to, and review all episodes on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all other podcast platforms. For your music listening pleasure, visit our website or go to www.shockwavesradio.com for all comments and questions Please email us at info at aftershockspodcast.com.